Hi guys, I want to run through some information that I have come across very interesting. Some of it I didn't know, I'm passing it along. I posted this video, How to Wreck the Environment. I posted it years ago on Top of Winston World. I posted it again on Never Lose Truth. Um, this is a chapter in a book written by Gordon McDonald, who was an associate director of the Institute of Geophysics and Planetary Physics at the University of California. Los Angeles and he participated in national science policy making and he was a member of President Johnson's Science Advisory Committee. This chapter is about governments who were already researching, experimenting with technologies to modify the weather, create weather, induce earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, the geoengineering, the toxic chemicals, heavy metals, as well the frequencies that could be used to control man, mind control. That was back in 1968. A subscriber who I want to thank for sending this along to me, this is a recently published journal article uh, the cats are going crazy by the way tonight so you may hear them but this 50 years after How to Wreck the Environment, Anthropogenic Extinction of Life on Earth. Is anything going to get better? I'm sorry. No. I'm not negative. I'm a realist. If we can't get the geoengineering, the weather modification to stop, then more and more people are going to die. When we lose more and more people, well, we don't have uh, the people, even who are alive, willing to do anything. But with less people, well, you have less of an army or the possibility of creating one. Um, but all life is dying. The trees, animals, all species, human being. So you can read these 15 pages. Um, brace yourself. It's not good. 50 years later on how to wreck the environment. Wow. Done a fabulous job with the spraying of toxic chemicals and heavy metals and the use of the frequencies to uh, modify, manipulate, intensify, create weather. And militaries around the world using weather as a weapon and it continues to go on. Uh, but I want to bring your attention to ow, that was a bite from a cat and that hurt. Okay, um, aerosolized particulate composition. He focuses on the coal ash, which is very, very harmful uh, to life itself, but also human beings. I read the comments. How many of you are dealing with very serious medical issues? Uh, you're sick. I'm not surprised to hear from Many of you never had sinus infections before, ever in your life. Now you're having them back to back. Allergies, never had them before. Now you have them. Look at that. That is not a natural cloud. This is from NASA's worldview, which I'm going to show you uh, in a minute. All of the spraying that was taking place in Washington and Oregon to bring about the storms that are, well, ongoing in Washington and Oregon. And I'm also going to be focusing on Medford, Oregon and the rash of suicides overnight that took place. But let me pause you because now the cats want to go back out. Okay, but what I really wanted to focus on was just this little tidbit that I did not know. I didn't know. Here, in 1968, McDonald foresaw the possibility that in the future, the military might develop the means to trigger on-demand covert environmental modifications to cause storms, floods, droughts, earthquakes, and tidal waves. Oh, those waves that you are seeing Washington, Oregon coast, brought about by man with just frequencies they can do it. Um, but here, 
although one would not expect an admission from the steeped in secrecy military. An email to then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton sent February 21, 2011 at 7.35 p.m. states 6.3 magnitude earthquake in Christchurch, New Zealand and on cue. On cue. Wow. Well, we all know that weather is being used as a weapon. But here we have this email and go, I'll link below to everything. Go to EndNote67 and you can get the uh, information needed to get that email on cue. Brought about by man, Hillary Clinton involved with destroying people's lives, destroying whole communities, destroying countries with the use of weather that has been weaponized. Okay, um, so the Washington, Oregon storms, storm that spawned tornado in Washington, uh, now moving toward eastern United States, over 30,000 without power, 60 mile per hour winds, um, one dead, one dead in uh, British Columbia, murdered because these storms, all weather is now man has usurped Mother Nature. Man brings you weather. And unfortunately, man has been bringing an awful lot of destructive weather. Uh, one dead in Washington, western Washington, five hurt, powerful storm, dumping snow, uh, rain, wind, 300,000 lose power and strong Washington wind. This was eight hours ago. Uh, here, the strong wind and rough surf hammer the Washington coast, and that was two hours ago. Well, what, you know, you take a look at NASA's worldview. These are satellite images, and I will link below to it, and you will see that Oregon, Washington has been bombarded with toxic chemicals and heavy metals. And I'm also going to get to other information that I learned about the use of aluminum and barium and the spraying before these uh, fronts, these weather fronts that come in before it rains and the use of the frequencies and what it does. And oh, wow, no wonder why. No wonder why uh, the United States, for the first time, their birth rate, our birth rate, is uh, far less than it ever has been, and our death rate is higher than it ever has been. Depopulation, success, ongoing, yay, we're being exterminated. This is not a natural cloud. Everybody knows Mother Nature does not work in defined lines. And I have to tell you that I have been saying the same thing for seven years and nothing has changed. Everything has gotten worse. That I have more and more subscribers who have come down with these very serious medical issues. Um, many have died. Uh, and now I have to let another cat out. This is insane. My life is just totally insane. All right. Uh, anyway, the use of the microwaves. You can see them, all of these ripples in, the, in this manufactured cloud substance. Some people call these tire tracks. These are caused by very powerful microwaves. And the use of the microwaves has, I've never seen on satellite, I've seen the extremely low frequencies. From time to time, I can see the microwaves in the satellite. Now I see them all the time. They are now increasing the wattage of these microwaves. And, well, it's not just in the atmosphere. All life is being subjected, subjected to incredibly dangerous frequencies. 
So how are you feeling in Oregon and Washington? You've been bombarded. But so have we here in the South, in the East. But focusing on Washington and Oregon, because I want to get to that story about these uh, this uh, tidal wave of suicide overnight in Medford. But are you going to tell me that that's Mother Nature? No, it's obvious. It's obvious. And that we can't get through to people. Look at the spraying that was taking place. Look at this. Obvious aerosols that don't just stay up there, that falls down and you breathe. You breathe all of what is being sprayed. Is it a surprise that so many people are sick and dying? No, it's not. Look at these microwaves. Look at this toxic mess. And these guys, they get away with it. They get away with it because <laughs> the American people just don't want to know. So this is, uh, you, look at how thick this is over Oregon and Washington. And it's so sad to see this. All right, so the current satellite today, right now, um, right on up to 1050. Well, on the East Coast. So here we have actually Northern California, Chico, Oroville, Paradise, all of these frequencies are being used. These are the extremely low frequencies. You see this very sharply defined cutout of our precipitation. The signatures have become so obvious now, they don't care that we see it. They don't care that we post videos because they know that the majority of the American people don't care and will do nothing nothing to even save their own life. Okay, so very dangerous are these frequencies and very dangerous is the weather that's being used as a weapon. Now when you see these frequencies crossing very dangerous because they create a vector of like empty space and I don't understand scalar technology enough to be able to communicate it clearly so I'll stop. I have many videos on my channel scalar technology Tom Bearden you can put it in the YouTube search bar and um, there is a scalar square popping up in Oregon. Don't be surprised if you have tornadoes within, let's say, the next 48 hours in this area, right here, right here. What I have been seeing on satellites and X-ray uh, reflectivity and, um, and the world view of all of the aerosol spraying, the bombardment has been intense in the last couple of days. And it continues. Just because you don't see the extremely low frequencies where you don't see precipitation, don't think that it's not not being em emitted. We can just see it in the precipitation. No, not Mother Nature. Not Mother Nature at all. So I would love to hear from you guys in Portland and Washington. How are you guys feeling? Because this has been pretty extraordinary. And the microwaves that I've been seeing, well, the precipitation is no longer there, but I do have this. Um, to show you. <laughs> Look at these bands of precipitation in Oregon. 
that was from very intense microwaves. These are extremely low frequencies being set off, intersecting, very dangerous. Canada, you guys, I, I, I don't, you guys have these extremely low frequencies being set off all the time. So here, Vancouver, and you had one person dead, British Columbia, the people are being murdered by weather. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Um, very, extremely dangerous. So this was just um, yesterday, or really 36 hours ago. And here are your ripples. Let me see if I can. And but it was going. It was all over. Um, but what I am now seeing are just bands of precipitation, straight bands. That means they are using intense microwaves, which means that that all this area is being bombarded with dangerous frequencies and it's really important. Okay, um, this is the next red reflectivity right now. Um, you see a laser beam or extremely low beam shot into Oregon. You can still see the microwaves in Oregon. You can see the ultra low frequencies. Idaho, Washington, but all of these little strips of precipitation right here, the frayed edges of your precipitation, very dangerous. But it's also going on in California, Northern California. You know, the storm today, <laughs> look at this thing. Oh my God. So I I go to Intellicast earlier this morning and I look, look at these microwaves being set off from Long Island, New York. Look at this. Boom. Okay. All of this is new within like the last few months, but just even in the last few months, it has been increasing dramatically. So I am really not surprised that I'm hearing from so many of you who are really struggling now. But will you tell me, <laughs> look at how straight is this storm okay it's it it's obvious it's clear it's being manipulated by man but look at these frequencies and i will tell you florida i very rarely see extremely low frequencies being set off in florida well you got them now you got them now but what are these straight bands of precipitation now that we are seeing? What, what? This is new. These little bands all over the place. But, really? Really. We now see. We now see storms that, oh, it's not just, you know, off the coast of Florida all the way on up into Canada but it's actually uh, <laughs> from the other side of Cuba the other side of Cuba here okay all the way on up to Canada okay what we are looking at are very obvious images right there. 
the signatures of the frequencies, the enormous length of these storms. Earlier today, the it was just a blob of precipitation that engulfed pretty much the entire southeast. And now, well, you see that we have pockets where we don't have any precipitation. It's not raining here now in Anderson, South Carolina, which is right here, upstate South Carolina. But the storm is still going on. Man is causing this. So, Oregon, suicide rate among the highest in the country. Wow, what? All right. From late 2011 to 2013, 2014, I was posting a lot of videos on the use of extremely low frequencies in Washington and Oregon. It was, it was, you were bombarded for years, years, pretty much on a daily basis. I would go to the satellite and boom, I would see the ultra low frequencies being set off, Washington, Oregon. Then it stopped. And then they were hitting other regions of the country just as hard as Washington and Oregon got it. And I thought, that's really interesting. But at the time when I was seeing the use of these ultra-low frequencies, Oregon, Washington, you had the highest suicide rate in the country. This article, uh, The Secret War Against Medford, Oregon, by Mark Metcalf. Now, my first Cop to Winston World channel, I posted a video on this. And I remember doing the research then and being able to come up with an awful lot of information on virtually everything that I wanted to research. Now, I can't find anything on the the rate of suicide overnight in Medford, Oregon. I can't find anything. So fortunately, I still have this. They are dumping. They are putting down the memory hole. All information. That information related to military experiments against the American people. One day, you will not be able to find anything. But what is this? Okay. Uh, it's from a book, The Secret War Against Medford, Oregon, by Mark Metcalf. I'm going to read a little bit of it. While reading Mark, he's, he was the one reading a back issue of Nexus magazine, I came across a news clip titled The Mystery Taos Hum. The story said that Representative Bill Richardson had asked the House Select Committee to investigate a noise that causes dizziness, shortness of breath, headaches, anxiety, sleeplessness, and is thought by some to emanate from a secret defense-related project plaguing various cities in New Mexico. During the years 1980 through 83, Mark was living with the daughter of the new, well, of the former um, head of the Department of Toxicology at the University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Dr. David Frazier. One day, this daughter told Mark of a frightening encounter involving her father and the American military. When Dr. Frazier came to stay with us while on vacation in 81, Mark had asked him to tell him the story. Suicide capital overnight. Early 70s, the small city of Medford, Oregon, became the suicide capital of the United States overnight. It was a dramatic anomaly. So Dr. Frazier put a team together uh, and they checked the water, air, soil, uh, any possible reason for this uh, large number of suicides overnight in this one town in Oregon. They couldn't find anything. But then the researchers discovered that ultra-low frequencies were being beamed into Medford, Oregon from a nearby military base. When they went to the base and met with its commanding officer, 
He said he knew about the ultra-low frequencies, but his base wasn't responsible. It was the Russians. The ultra-low frequency waves stopped the very next day. The military base was not the only source. Ultra-low frequencies were also beamed into the homes of the populace through their television antennas, which created some sort of standing wave resonance within the structure of the home itself. People who were often at home in the houses with TV antennas became severely depressed, even if they did not watch TV. So clearly, they had a carrier wave of the ultra-low frequencies going right into people's homes. The ultra-low frequency wave had stopped. The researchers returned to the university to write the report. Um, several men displaying CIA credentials arrived on campus and said that the ultra-low frequency waves beamed into Medford were a national security matter. They explicitly threatened to kill each of the researchers, including Dr. David Frazier himself. Should anyone speak further about it, it seems clear that the military-industrial complex secretly declared war on the American people quite some time ago and is waging a long-term psychological warfare operation complete with fully operational mass mind control technology. In fact, our whole society seems to be what Walter Bauer refer, uh, refers to as psycho-civilization ruled by cryptocracy, which is a form of um, government where the real leaders are behind the curtain, hidden. And, well, shadow government, deep state. What makes this evil that pervades our nation so effective is the inappropriateness of our response. We behave much like B.F. Skinner's chicken when placed between two salivating wolves. We just go on pecking. But who do we call when the bad guys have badges and judges and ray guns? When blueprints of new federal prisons have cells labeled labs? How can we learn to develop responses that are appropriate to the dire position we have acquiesced to? We must look for new models of behavior to consider and act upon. We must deeply consider the achievements of the Founding Fathers, which in many ways were without precedent. If we do not find the courage to change our behavior, we may soon come to the end of human history on this planet. And guess what? Behavior has not changed. So, yeah, many people are dying. Many of those who refuse to change are saddled now with an awful lot of medical problems and their circumstances are worse. Look at all the people who have lost homes just in this past year. Millions of Americans have had their homes destroyed. We are watching. We are watching. We are watching. That's all we're doing is watching. These psychopathic evil people kill us. We watch it on a daily basis. And what really upsets me is that we cannot seem to figure out how to organize to help one another. So all of the people who are losing homes, who fall into uh, that class of people who have suffered the consequences, and they continue to suffer the consequences. Now, I got a comment from somebody who said, it's nine million now. I posted a video on that GoFundMe for the wall. And in four days, they got 5.4 million. In a couple of hours, they got about four and a half million more for a wall. Huh. And we have millions of Americans who are really suffering and so desperately need help. And we can't figure out how to help them. Something's wrong. So, yeah, I have been saying for seven years, P 
People don't like hearing it, but I have said every individual needs to do the work necessary to raise their consciousness, to get out of that low uh, level of consciousness that is ego-driven. You have these beliefs about yourself that are not necessarily true. When you get to that higher consciousness, you see, wow, I have been living a lie. Because what people care about, they actually manifest in their behavior. You can see what people care about by watching what they do. And if we cannot get to that level of generative care that Mark Passio talks about, nothing will change and we will soon see the end of human history on this planet. Okay. Reading this, which I came across, and I don't even know how I came across it, but it's uh, an excerpt from The Veil of Invisibility. I will link below to The Veil of Invisibility. Ah, Tesla. Yes. Very interesting. Read. And as you go through these pictures, some of what the Tesla coil looks like, well, it looks like our Doppler radar stations. But yeah, curious, George Bell of Invisibility, the CIA Oracle. What is this excerpt from that 83-page paper? In clear, in clear skies, a few days before large incoming storm fronts, Vast networks of chemtrails are dispersed to facilitate CIA Nazi control. This massive coordinated spraying effort has a two-stage effect of allowing days of enhanced atmospheric um, electromagnetic beam propagation conditions before the toxic aluminum and radioactive barium are brought down to expose the entire populace to high levels of radiation, nanobacteria, um, and very, I don't know what that is, um, by rainfall. So we've had so much rain here. More rain than I remember in the four years I've lived here. And a whole lot of spraying. Washington, Oregon. Lots of rain. Okay, so they are dumping an awful lot of very dangerous elements that we are breathing in. And the rain is bringing it down upon the trees and all life. So, by this complex process of atmospheric tampering, it's an act of war on every living being. The CIA causes the widely publicized annual flu pandemics around the world to the benefit of the Nazi-dominated pharmaceutical industry and if you don't know that we brought the Nazis over after World War II, gave them a whole new identity, put them in positions in universities and labs and our government all over the place. And yeah, the pharmaceutical industry is controlled by Nazis. We've got, a, it, it, we've got Nazis all over. And it, no, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not the Republicans, those on the right. Um, well, this drives billion dollars of profits each year in neurotoxic product scams like Tamiflu. They get us sick and they profit from it. But the secondary fallout effects of the aluminum and barium have been made clear by Dr. Robert Falk's discovery of nanobacteria, an entirely new and abundant class of infectious bacteria that proliferates throughout our lithosphere and upper atmosphere. I posted a video a couple of months ago, mainstream media, um, several articles suddenly came out. Oh my God, we've got uh, trillions and trillions and trillions of this bacteria that we never knew. It's, it's all over our atmosphere. Okay, um, infectious bacteria that proliferates throughout our lithosphere and upper atmosphere, now known to be the most abundant on Earth's life forms. Folks, 
findings have shown that nanobacteria metabolize metals, especially binding in massive numbers to the airborne aluminum and barium in chemtrails before precipitating down to the groundwater in rainstorms. After the atmospheric metals have served to propagate beam weaponry, they act as a perfect delivery system for virtually undetected infectious nano agents, compounding the metal's own toxicity in the human body. Toxicologists have shown that fluoride, fluoride in drinking water allows aluminum particles in the body to penetrate the blood-brain barrier and interfere with neural function. Research suggests that in magnesium deficient persons, which is pretty much our entire population, particulate aluminum is stored in the central nervous system, replacing natural magnesium, resulting in the inactivation of tubulin, an enzyme crucial to nerve function. Magnesium malate is a dietary supplement that effectively blocks aluminum poisoning as it removes aluminum from the body by chelation via malic acid while providing natural dietary magnesium. So the New World Order mind control machine will falter when the American people bring an end to the Nazi water fluoridation and toxic chemtrail policies. Wow, this person's saying the same thing that this person was saying. Hey, Americans, you need to change your behavior. All right. Again, I'm going to read this. Magnesium malate effectively blocks aluminum poisoning as it removes aluminum from the body by chelation. Magnesium malate, malate blocks aluminum poisoning. If you've got the money, I suggest you go and buy magnesium malate from a reputable source. The Walmart brand, supermarket brands, uh-uh. I will link below to everything. Ciao, guys.